Good morning. Hello, and welcome to Mindset Mondays. This is our second episode. It's February 19th, and really looking forward to continuing these conversations. Thank you so much for the folks who joined last week, and thank you for joining today. The, I am David Taylor Klaus, uh, and again, this is Mindset Mondays with DTK. And the one I wanted to play with today, and well, let me let me back up why we're here. That's why I have this agenda. Um, Mindset Mondays is an opportunity for growth minded folk, those who are or those who wish to be to play with mindset, the idea, individual months, mindsets, new concepts, a way to really explore what's possible by mastering our thinking. Our opportunity is to change our thoughts and change our behaviors and changing our behaviors can let us change outcomes. So the reason I've committed to a year long program of this is really to bring the idea of the power of mindset and the ultimate level of control that we have over it. So with that said, look, today's quote is, I think one, one of my favorite and, and I get to pick. So if you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. This is Henry Ford. And I think this one is even more powerful when you have some concept of his story. And so I'm not going to drag out the history lesson. Let me start with Henry Ford was obsessed with the idea of the gasoline engine. And oddly enough, he was working with Thomas Edison in his lab and shared his obsession with Edison. And they would talk about it and play with the ideas quite a bit. And with Edison's blessing, Ford went off to go start his own company. Now, the path to success is almost never straight. It's often very wobbly and misdirected, and it never seems to go as we planned. And Henry Ford, for him, it was no different. Um, he went through two failures. One, a uh, shattering bankruptcy, lost everything. And the next time he was forced out by his partners, you know, he experienced the much like Steve Jobs did with Scully. So he did not have an easy path to success. By the time the Model T hit production lines, Henry Ford was 45. He started with Edison at 28 and didn't finally get the gasoline engine into a production environment, which was his dream until he was age 45. Married at 25 with a son, he was terrified all along the way. And yet, facing the fear and doing it anyway, when you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. And holding that mindset from the beginning that it was possible for him is what made all the difference. It allowed him to move through a succession of failures and get to what his ultimate success was. The I think I shared with my wife, Elaine, that I was going to use this quote today. And one of the things she reminded me of is a phenomenal truth that humans are evidence collecting machines. And that's why your mindset is so important. Once you've made a decision, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, once you've decided, you will begin to collect evidence. You see the world through the filter of the choice you've made, the belief that you're holding, the concept that you have chosen to be true. And I think that's what's incredibly important about this. I just realized that my camera wasn't on. <laughs> that's what's incredibly important about this quote. The, the fact that we are evidence collecting machines, that we see through the filter of the decision we've made and the mindset we hold, we will look at opportunities and see challenges. We will look at everything we face and we will see setbacks. Instead of persisting through the setbacks, we will give up easily. Instead of seeing effort as fruitless or worse, we'll see effort as the path to mastery when we choose a positive mindset. And I have seen this experience for me constantly, and I see it with clients, and I see it with my kids. When you hold the belief that you can create something, it's the only way you possibly can. 
the evidence collection happens unconsciously. We hear comments from colleagues, we hear comments from a boss, we hear comments from clients. And if we hold the belief that we can't accomplish something, every one of those comments, every one of those comments proves that belief. You know, it even goes to the language that we choose. When we talk about, I need to do something, I have to do something. Even that is externalizing the motivation for a task. I have to, even if it's something as simple as cleaning the office, because at some point I have to clean the office. If I have to do it, that's somebody else's motivation. That's an external. Even if I need to do it, it's still external. If I want to do it, that's completely different. And it changes my engagement with it. It changes my motivation with it. And that makes a phenomenal difference. First of all, the only way it's going to happen is if I'm engaged and interested in doing it. So testing your language, I need to, I want to, which is it? If you're making appearances, if you are forcing yourself to engage in activities that you don't really want to, then let's say as an entrepreneur, if the bookkeeping is not something that you want to do, but yes, it needs to be done, that's something that you need to put at the top of your list to hire out, to hire somebody else to do it. When Beth Cooper and I started our internet strategy and web development company back in 1995. I did the books for the first year. And the only reason we had a second year is because Beth started doing the books. And eventually when managing the finances became more complex, neither one of us wanted to do it. That was something that we hired out. It allowed us to focus on the highest and best use of our time. That which only we could do, that which we were best suited to do. So by hiring out the things that we suck at and we don't want to do, that allows us to do what we're exceptional at. So our language is incredibly critical to our success. So as we play with that quote, the idea that if you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. What comes up for you? You can actually use the chat, uh, the message window in Facebook, and I'll be able to see what you put up. Where do you see, hey, Lynn, <laughs> where do you see that you have chosen to believe that you can't versus choosing to believe that you can? I'll put the quote back up. I'm getting lots of welcome comments and good mornings and folks coming in from Chicago and LA and all over. Um, and, and again, by the way, in the Facebook group, there's plenty of opportunity to comment and continue this conversation. I'm really curious what folks are seeing with where you choose to believe that you can't or choose to believe that you can and what difference that has made. This is a, this is a really interesting piece that you know, I watch folks. Tracy, thank you. I love that comment. Uh, Tracy share when I believe I can, the world is my oyster. And I, I, that's an incredibly positive way to frame and hold things that possibility is limitless when you are in control. Um, my wife's view of the world uh, is that people at choice are free. The ultimate freedom that we have, again, is that ability to choose, like we talked about last week, to choose one thought over another. Um, yeah, can and can't quote is deeper. Do you really believe that you can or you can't? The, 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 one of the comment I got was the difference between when you can't or you don't want to, if you believe you can versus not wanting to, it's back to that opportunity. Whatever mindset you hold is you, the lens through which you're going to collect evidence. And yeah, Jody's got a really good point that what we choose to believe shifts instantly what we're willing to attempt. If we believe we can't do something, we're much more likely not to even attempt it. And then even when we do, we're going to collect the evidence. Thank you, Shelly. And Shelly, I know you do a lot of work with energy in your work. And noticing that's great. It's very different 
the energy is very different when you do what you want to do versus what you need to do. And that is a big piece. That's the motivation shifts your energy. And frankly, it changes the likelihood of anything ever happening. <laughs> right. And, and there is still the, the limit. There are only 24 hours in the day, right? Do you really want to do it? Or do you, is how much time is there that's available? And do you want it enough to make it happen? This is, this is a great one to explore, and I look forward to people chipping into the conversation within the Facebook group on where you see this mindset having an opportunity to shift things in your world. And that's part of what we want to play with is, and this is what I like the Facebook book group for, is what will you do now with this mindset? What's the opportunity for shift? What can you change? What will you do now in your world to take advantage of the ability to control your mindset? Because when you want to do it, nothing actually can stop you. Lynn, thanks for that, because one of my favorite quotes is also, <laughs> we're far too smart to be the only ones standing in our way. And yeah, we need to get out of our own way. Choosing a mindset that serves what we want and where we're going and what we want to do and be in this world is a very, very powerful way to move forward. All right, so until next week, thank you very much for joining. Again, every Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. GMT, Get together for 15 minutes in the morning to play with mindset as a concept and individual quotes and mindsets. And one of the things I want to ask each time is what is it that comes up for you with the mindset that we're playing with today? And what will you do different in your world? Please join in the conversation at the Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash Mindset Mondays. Looking forward to your voice in the conversation. Until next week, be well.